My friend, are you having issues changing from one chord to another, just like every single guitar player since the beginning of time? Well, you're in good company, my friend, and I'm gonna show you one little tweak that if you do this, not only is it gonna make everything easier, it's gonna make you a lot faster in changing your chords. And this is something that a lot of folks just never consider, and a lot of teachers never teach it. Let me show you. Uh, a lot of times, most of the time, when folks are changing chords, they will lift all their fingers and then reapply them. Why that is? I think it's just a natural habit of, okay, well, I'm changing chords, so I need to, to move everything, right? But with a simple examination of two chords and two chords only, right? So just looking at two chords, especially the ones that you're, the two chords that you're having an issue with in that moment, um, if you do this, it's gonna help out so much. So for instance, if I'm playing a C chord to an A minor chord, the natural thing to do that I see a lot of people do is lift all their fingers and then reapply. This is fine if you've been playing for a long time like I have, but if you haven't been, it's, uh, it, it can be problematic. Not only that is I'm working harder. Let me show you a little trick. So if I'm holding a C chord and I'm playing an A minor chord, in reality, the only thing I need to do is move one finger. So this is what I call the inventory breakdown method or IBM, a complex term, but super easy. Basically, what is common between those two chords? So if we're playing a C chord and an A minor chord, these two fingers are the same. Nothing is happening different between them. So why would we lift them up? We've just made it a lot harder. Instead, let's just move the one finger that needs to be moved and we just made this literally a lot easier. Now, I've noticed that whenever I would teach my one-on-one -on -one students this, they had an issue with it at first because we build neural paths. Whatever it is that we practice, we get good at. So if we're practicing the wrong thing, we're gonna get great at the wrong thing. We don't wanna do that. We want to practice deliberately and with intention and the proper technique as I teach in all my courses. Resist the urge to lift all those fingers. And if you have to just do it super slow at first, that's great, do that. That's gonna build, start building those neural paths and within two or three or four times of this, you're gonna start getting it. And then as you do it faster, you really integrate it. But at first, just get it right. So again, I'm holding this down. I'm pressing harder on fingers one and two just to remind my brain that I don't wanna lift them up and I'm just gonna move that finger. So I'm very intentional about it. I'm moving it over there and I'm doing this. Don't even strum, no need to. Because really the problem is not the strumming, it's what's happening here. So now I'm intentionally going fingers one and two, you're gonna stay down, finger three, move on over where you're supposed to. And I'm gonna do that. Whatever it takes to do this, friends, it's gonna be the most awkward the very first time you do it. Second, third, and fourth time uh, are gonna be easier, okay? So I'm gonna do that, and then eventually you're gonna be like, okay, your brain's gonna start getting it, and then you're just gonna be able to do it faster and faster. There's only so many chord changes, right, in regards to doing this, and eventually you'll build up such uh, a great habit that you'll start doing these things automatically, just like anything else that you do in life. You have to first do it in your conscious mind, and then eventually it gets into your subconscious where you don't even have to think about it. That's when you see great players just sailing across the neck doing things and not even really thinking about it because it's already baked into their DNA, if you will, okay? So you can do this with a lot of different chords. If you're going, say, from the E minor to the A minor, even though we have to lift all of our fingers, we can easily think of this thing as a block and just moving like this, okay? So you're gonna find a lot of commonalities. If we're going from a G chord to a D chord, this finger doesn't move at all. So you might say, yeah, but what about the other three fingers? Well, yeah, they're having to move, but just the fact that you have an anchor that you a benchmark, if you will, that you can have all the other fingers follow is super powerful. And if you practice this just a few times, you're really gonna integrate this habit. And again, there's only so many open chords. As I say, there's nine essential open chords as I teach you for free in the courses at yourguitarsage.com then uh, it's going to, you're gonna build a habit. And then when you start playing more complex chords, it's gonna be built into your habit to do this. So friends, have fun with this. Take your time because I promise you, this is the game changer that you've been looking for to change your chords swiftly, quickly, 
cleanly, all right? Friends, I'm here for you. I'm passionate about your success. Leave your comments below, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, visit yourguitarsage.com, join me in the next video. See you there.